Welcome to this edition of On the Ice, brought to you by Pemina Source for Sports and Case Financial Group. On today's show, we bring back the Cobb Sports Marketing Advisors, and I mean two of them, because two of these gentlemen work on two different playing fields, or ice field, ice sheets, I should say, when it comes to developing game plans for the next level for their clients. Mr. Andrew Greenall deals with players that deal specifically with uh, the CSSHL and the high school athlete, whereas... Mr. Sean Gilbert, who's going to be joining us today as well, will discuss the avenues to which he's been able to set up and administer and establish dealing with junior players, players that have aged out of high school, and potentially want to look at the importance of getting into the NCAA or junior programs in North America. So please welcome yourselves to On the Ice. All right, we got Andrew Greenall here with Cobb Sports Marketing. Sean Gilbert's going to come join us right there. Here he is. Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking some time this afternoon to discuss hockey. With everything that's going on nationally with return to play, tell us what's happening in Alberta over the next couple of weeks and what the two of you are planning to do with return to play and seeing these players on ice for the first time in a while. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, right now, with the association that I'm coaching with, I coach a U18 team here in Calgary in the midget AA level. Um, they're trying to – Hockey Canada sent out a huge PDF document on uh, standards and rules and regulations on, on what they're expecting from the players and everything like that. And it's, I think a couple of the associations are having a hard time navigating exactly what's going to be required. Um, it's proven that uh, physical activity wearing masks isn't really uh, good for the human body. So they're trying to figure out when are they going to be wearing masks, how are they going to do physical distancing, how many players are allowed on the ice, how many players are allowed on the bench. So there's a lot of unknowns right now is, is, what, I'm, is what I'm getting. Yeah, I think we're getting the same from each province. Sean Gilbert, first time on the show, you're new to us. Yeah. Give us a quick 60-second bio of who you are and what your role is with Cobb Sports Marketing. Um, my name's Sean Gilbert. I've been, I played hockey growing up here in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, I played up to the junior B level. I played some uh, high-end junior football for the Calgary Colts. Got into coaching hockey in 1996. Loved it ever since then. My dad got me involved and I had a 2000 son go through the whole system and everything. And when he aged out, I continued coaching in the uh, quadrant levels here in Calgary and in the uh, major double A levels. Got on to scouting with uh, the Calgary Mustangs at the AJHL. Unfortunately, uh, they closed their doors a couple of years ago, and I got on with uh, KIJHL to chase each of the junior B in, in BC. And, yeah, so basically hockey, live, sleep, and drink hockey pretty much 12 months of the year. Love the sport. So what have you been doing the last three months without hockey? <laughs> um, good thing that you can only see from here up. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, a little bit of golf. Some the honeydew lists are getting shorter. Done, done a lot of uh, stuff around the house, but yeah, it was tough in middle of March there when it came to a complete halt. It was it was uh, tough because um, our association had uh, spring skills camps. I was supposed to be on the ice three nights a week, and I was involved in some spring hockey tournaments, and all this stuff got delayed. So it's been been doing a lot of. Uh, I got a smoker, so I've been doing a lot of cooking. <laughs> And a lot of golf, Hopefully, playing a lot of golf on the weekends and just trying to stay busy. You're supposed to say leg workouts. That's what you're supposed to say. No, the kids are doing leg workouts. I, oh. I've talked to a few of the kids. They're doing uh, workouts <laughs> in parks because you can't go into the gyms and work out now. So a lot of the uh, training facilities have gone outdoors to parks. Like uh, I have a stepson who plays plays hockey here. And the group that he's been working out with, there's a big hill over by McMahon Stadium in Calgary and there having to sprint that hill and he comes home every night going, wow, that's, that's a workout. So there, there's ways to keep going and, and keep in physical shape. It's tough when you're not on the ice though. It, it really is. Absolutely. It's, it's a different, it's a different uh, physiological presence on the ice versus off the ice. Uh, I know training with it. And we've always had that discussion of, you know, lateral motions versus North South motions and training and teaching the muscle motions and the muscle movements back to the brain. It will be a difficult test this summer because there's going to be a lot of players that are, their skating stride may look a little foreign to them. 
Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, and it's, it's going to be an interesting summer to see with the return to play. Andrew and Sean, I have to ask you because both of you kind of work with different sectors of players, a different demographic. Andrew, let's start with you. With regards to, you know, the high school age, what is the big, you know, boulder that you have to kind of navigate with to allow players to get to the next level and make sure that they are in the right place uh, training-wise, academically, and then performing on the ice? Good question. I, uh, like we've spoken before, working as a team with the players at the younger age and trying to keep them involved and trying to keep them interested um, is a challenge, especially right now. Um, but looking at what they want to do in the future, type of career, type of school they want to go to, um, trying to encourage them, get support from mom and dad. Um, so in school right now, this week, a lot of schools are coming to the finals, especially for the grade nines and grade 11s, they're writing their SATs, uh, sorry, grade 12s. So it's, um, it's been a challenge working with them, trying to get them to engage, getting them focused. And then once that hurdle's passed, I think trying to get them back onto the ice and work with them that way, like you're saying, yeah, a lot of them are going to have chicken legs. It's going to be interesting to watch. Um, be interesting to see Sean back on the ice too. He's, uh, I'm happy we only see from here down. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of difference. Uh, you know, Sean spoke of the, the new Bible that we've all got from Hockey Canada and, and how we have to follow it. So it will be different. And I think, uh, you know, Sean may agree with me. We may have to change the way we're, we're helping the kids. We're helping the players. Um, you know, it might have, we may have to do this more uh, for social distancing. You know, a lot of unknowns still out there. Sean, for yourself, uh, Andrew mentions the word uh, maintaining a focus uh, when it comes to, you know, training or being proficient on the ice. When you deal with older players, I mean, older players not by much, but I mean, 18, 19 year olds, they have a different perception on what has to get done versus what needs to get done compared to a 15 and 16 year old. They're not being led by the hand of mom and dad very much. Rather, they have their own goals. They're, be they're becoming adults. How right. do you continue to keep their focus on a potential goal that that client might have, whether it be, you know, playing local at a higher level to potentially playing, you know, south away from mom and dad and opening up their rings, so to speak. Right. So when we get into junior level, with, with me coaching at the at the U18 level, a lot of the times it's dealing with the disappointment. The disappointment, uh, first of all, not making that midget triple, triple A team, or sorry, the U18 triple A team, or the U18 prep team where they're playing varsity, um, or not getting drafted in the WHL draft. What I find my biggest challenge is, is is trying to take that core group who they're very talented hockey players, very good students, and saying, hey, there's different avenues to get to different places. If you want to play hockey and you want to get a scholarship to one of the NCAA schools in a Div 1, Div 3 capacity, doesn't matter where, there's all kinds of different avenues. So it's sitting down and, and giving them another goal, another um, thing to drive towards. So for the training in at the junior level is we have a strength and conditioning coach in Chase. So what happens is when they're at their billets, you're right. They're away from mom and dad. They're pay, they live at a billet's house. They're paying. They're, they're living in somebody's basement or, or have a room in somebody's house, and it's their responsibility to get up in the morning and go off to and, and train with the trainer during regular times. But now it's on them. So they're they're sent a training program from a strength and conditioning coach, and it's up to them to do it. Because unfortunately, the fact is at the junior hockey age level, there's no promises and no guarantees. So if you want to get looked at. To go to NCAA level, you got to keep the spot on that team. And you're almost training for that spot, right, Sean? Like you're to encourage them with the disappointment still, but you're trying to encourage absolutely. them. Absolutely, them, right? because somebody always wants your spot. So I, I have a story if I can share with you of, of a kid who who played Bantam AA here in Calgary. I'm going to get used to this U U15 stuff soon. <laughs> for Bantam AA here in Calgary, he never made midget quadrant CSSHL. Was kind of a last cut kind of kid. His last year of U18 as a 17-year-old, he played on a, two, on a on a community two team. He got into we got him in contact with the Fernie Ghost Riders. His first year in Fernie, he was in and out of a lineup as a third pair D man, in and out, in and out. But he stuck it out. The second year, he was in a third 
second pairing first year. He was an assistant captain, and he just got a, a full ride to Jamestown, North Dakota. So to play for Jimmy's. So there's all kinds of different avenues, but first of all, it starts here with what the player wants. And the big thing I really like about Andrew and why I jumped on board with, with Andrew is as much as the play, parents feel they are doing the best for their player, nine times out of ten with being a scout, they're not. Because I'll tell you what, all coaches have always asked me from the AJHL level to the KI level, how's his parents? Because if the parents are a headache, they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So Isn't that just incredible? I mean, you, you hit a nail on the head there building a shed, talking about your supporting cast. And if your supporting cast isn't, you know, positive, isn't affirming the goals and the aspirations for the player's sake, not for their own sake. And there's, there's a, I make that mention because – Every mom and dad thinks you know, number 99 or 87 is living next door to them or living in the same house. Yeah. Right. And it's not that way. I mean, there'll never be a 99. There'll never be another 87 or a exactly. 66. The bottom line is, like you said, Sean, there's going to be blips on the road. Yep. Uh, Wizard of Oz never had a yellow brick road that was always yellow brick. There was blips and there was hills Absolutely. and valleys and the – we alluded to disappointments and I'm going to ask Andrew this question. When you have a player that faces adversity or comes up and stumbles, how is it that we're able to get them back on track, understanding that, you know, this deterrent or this negative in your world right now is actually a positive mm -hmm. in the long run. I'm trying to think of how to answer that. Cause usually, it's uh, I think it, it depends on how how they perceive the disappointment. You've got to look at why why were you released or why were you cut or why didn't you make it? What are those what are those things that you've learned and you can take away from that and work on to get stronger and better? Um, I know with one of the players, their goal this year is to make the Alberta Female Hockey League. So we've been trying to work over the the winter and it's been a little bit more difficult right now but they want to make a, a top team in their mind. So we've worked, we've looked back on why they were cut, why they were released, you know, how they can change their attitude, how they can be perceived differently on the ice. So I think it's different for every child, but you got to make it look more of a, look at more of what they can grow on and what they've learned from it. I think like Sean can contest the older kids. They'll get mad at themselves, break a stick. The younger kids don't have that, um, that um, thought process yet so they need somebody to help guide them the older kids it's like oh gosh I didn't make it break their stick to walk in the dressing room so the little ones it's uh, I think it's difficult you have to address it in different ways with them and look at the positives you know okay it's your skating well it's not the end of the world let's get outside you know get some rollerblades on or you know find some ice get out there skate work on those power strides you know maybe it's your stick handling all right well Let's work on stick handling in the backyard, get a bunch of buddies out. So you talked about doing more of this, more video stuff and looking from the yep. you know the shoulders up. And we're gonna start seeing skaters from the waist down. <laughs> I'm gonna ask both of you this question. I'll start with Sean and as you can follow up. Are we're gonna start seeing players who have tried to fib their way through the last three months? And then we're going to see the rock stars that are going to be like, yeah, I did the hills. I did the lifts. I did, I moved the hay bale sort of thing. When it comes to your clients and, you know, you know, checking up on them, so to speak, how are we going to, you know, allow, is there going to be an allowance to say, okay, we realize what you did and what you didn't do. This is where we need to pick up the socks. Yeah, I think once we get a clear picture of when we're going to be allowed on ice and what the, the parameters of that's going to be. Um, but a lot of times what I say to the kids is, I can lead you to the trough. It's up to you to drink the water, right? We can give them the roles. We can give them the skills. We can give them all the drills and all the workout scenarios. But if they are not going to do it, then they got to start holding themselves accountable. And I think that really, as Andrew, Andrew, Andrew has talked about, about the kid breaking the stick, well, a younger kid's going to be, yeah, whatever. I, You know what? I don't want to shoot pucks today. I'm going to go ride my bike with my, butt, with my buddies. But with the younger kids, 
12, 13 years old, they're never out of shape. They're just, they're rock stars. They never get out of shape. I find that the older kids, the 16 and 17 year old kids who are hanging out with their friends more and not doing much, they have a harder time getting back into, let's call it hockey shape. Right. And, and I think you will notice, like when we first, when we get back on the ice, you'll notice when you're doing your drills and, and you'll be like, yeah, that kid worked hard. Well, maybe, maybe their skating is the same. It'll be their endurance. That's going to be the, the telltale. A lot of kids coming back with asthma mysteriously. <laughs> I can't breathe. Yeah. For the sports performance perspective, not because of other perspectives in the world, but they can't breathe. Yes. I'll agree with you. Let's yeah. take a quick break, gentlemen. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about more about your roles as advisors and making sure that you are that guiding chip uh, for your uh, male and female performance. So stay with us here on the ice. Back with Andrew, who is, what is your, are you the head of Cobb Sports Marketing? Who? Are you the big wig? Are you the, are you the, no. the big guy? No, no Sean's the big guy. No, no, Sean, Sean runs the show. Now, now we're going to get Waldorf and Stadler here on us. We're going to get both yeah. you guys discussing back and forth who shoots the shots like Andrew. Andrew's got a one nothing lead on you, Sean, right now. Right the now, shots I'm fired. Great. I would say Andrew is more focusing on the background off off ice stuff like that. I'm focusing more on the the on ice stuff. So that's kind of we're, we're a good team that way. I have a very long coaching resume, running my own hockey camps in the past, scouting and stuff like that. And Andrew is very good with what he does with the CSHL and the kids and, and that. So I, I think we work well as a team. We that's do. A very, that. a very, that's a we very 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 political answer. Thank you. Me, and that was the answer I was looking for because when it comes to ice, we're all critical of people's of players play. You know, we talk about their instinct level. We talk about their. You look at the old NHL hockey stats: the passing, the shooting, the aggressiveness, the toughness, the on ice instinct. The you know, there's all the different uh, categories of statistics that are kept on every single player. Is it over? Is it too much? In my opinion, yeah, hockey, Sean. hockey is hockey. Yeah. If you outwork the team you're playing against, and if you – when I coach hockey, we I call it the house, the area between the uh, – down below the ringette line and between the dots and a triangle, an upside-down house. If you dominate the house, home plate, or whatever people call it, in both ends of the ice, and you don't turn the puck over at the blue lines, you're going to win 90% of the hockey games you play. Yeah. Myself, we uh, odd things happen. We were in a playoff series this year, and uh, we outshot a team in two games, 107 to 46, and we lost two games straight. Sometimes you run into a hot goalie, and all those stats go out the, out the door. But there it is. Opinion, hockey is hockey. Hard work, <clears throat> smart game plan, dominate your end of the ice, dominate their end of the ice, and don't make bad turnovers at the blue lines. You should win hockey games. So the hard ice, the hard work is getting done on the ice. The players are playing their hearts out. You gentlemen have to find the importance and the hard work off the ice. When a player comes to you and they give you a set of goals, how then do you approach 
moving that player or getting that player the opportunity at that next level? Andrew, I'm going to start with you on that because, you know, you're not only dealing with the player, but you're dealing more with the supportive role with the parents as well, making a group decision. As a, as a group coming together to, to help them reach their goals and their sets, um, you know, it's – Sean, fill fill this one in. I want to I want to hear how Sean answers this because I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Well, I'm gonna re I'm gonna reword this for Sean then because Sean, you're dealing with players now that are more adult. You know, yeah. mom and dad have kind of let the you know the male or the female leave the hand a little bit. They've you've led them to water. They have yeah. to learn to drink now. But that decision making and when they come to you and they say you they want to do they want to play in New York or they want to play in BC or they want to go check out Southern California, you know, where you've got these ideas, you now have to make them realistic goals. And how do you attain those goals for players? Basically you got to determine what type of player you have. And then you got to look at the organizations that are available to you and find out, you talked about the right fit. So we talked about disappointment earlier. Sometimes players, have the skill level to play at a triple-a level unfortunately there's nine other players at that triple-a level and the coach says i only need eight because i need different role players right so sometimes you got the disappointment of the fit there so the big thing is is finding where that player fits and see if they want to go to southern california and they're a power forward and the coach in southern california is looking for high-end goal scorer who's going to score every time he gets a puck on a stick you're not going to send that player to that team for an example, in Chase, my mandate from the general manager and the director of hockey operations is I want you to find me future captains. We're all about skill and character, right? So you, you got to reach out to the teams, network yourself. Like I, I've been very lucky. I got a lot of contacts in the SJHL, the AJHL, the BCHL, the KI, the HJ. So it's about networking yourself and, and finding out, okay, well, here's some possibilities. So here's plan A. Plan A is let's go to the AJHL camps. Let's make it there. If we don't make it there, what's our plan B? Plan B is okay. Now we have a KI backup. If plan B doesn't work, you gotta have a plan C, HJ backup. So it's 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 kind of routing it out and saying to the player, like, you need, if you want these goals, you have to work hard, you have to accomplish them. And then if you achieve it, you can't let up because you know what? There's somebody behind you who wants your spot and nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, you, you, that's that's been a message I've heard now before and after the break from you, Sean, which is very important. The goals get it; they're they're being attained. Uh, they are reaching those goals. They have to stay on their horse. They cannot let up. Um, Andrew, I'm going to ask you this because you kind of dodged that last question. <laughs> I wanted to see how he like it's for, for the little guys. A lot of them, they they look they look over and beyond. Like they, it's almost like they miss that middle section that Sean's speaking about, and they just want to go from playing U15 AA right into the NHL without even looking. So it, I wanted him to answer that first, because when we're working with, with like anyone under U17, basically, and talking to them, we have to kind of reel them back in and go, okay, come on, you know, let, let's think of a realistic goal. Because as Sean alluded to earlier, it's the parents. Sometimes it's the parents that are pushing the kid and the kid really doesn't want it. So by talking to mom and dad and then by talking to the kid, you can come up with some realistic goals and look at it from a child's point of view as well by going, okay, well, you know, your mom and dad want you to play in the NHL. Where do you want to go? I just, you know, I just want to play for, you know, the Broncos or I just want to play the Mustangs were still around. Like they, to the kids, they just want to play hockey. It's fun. And the kids that Sean's dealing with have that. They, they've gone past that. They're in that straight mental capacity now that they want to achieve something. And they want to go to the AJHL or they want to go to the WHL route or the college route. So it's it, two, two different variants, as you guys both alluded to earlier. It's the little kids are just, it's almost like they jumped that middle stream. Sean, am I correct? Right? Like most of them do. For sure. Like a, a lot of people I talk to you say, well, if my son plays in a WHL and then he's going to go play in the NCAA. I'm yeah. like, uh, no, he's not. Because for yeah. every, even if you're on, if you're on the scorecard of an exhibition game in the WHL, you lose one year of eligibility. Yep. So 
you got to we got to be talking to these kids before and saying, hey, if, if NCAA is your route, well, then we're looking at AJHL or SJ or another mm -hmm. route. Don't want to go down, right? So it's keep because the parents don't know. Honestly, the parents just think, oh, there's this next league up. That's where my kid's got to play because I want my kid there. Right. And, you and, then, that's a, and those little tidbits of information, Sean, are so important because you see players yeah. that lose years of eligibility yeah. or are now tunnel visioned into playing dub and then going to play youth sports. That, that, that's not a bad thing, but it's not what the player wants. And right. when it, I mean, if you're looking at that, if that is on their goal list of playing in the States and playing Div 1 or Div 3, then they know they have to play in other leagues. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you have to remember how selective and how amazing it is to play this great game that we all love. I mean, I grew up with it. Andrew's grown up. Sean, you've grown up with it. And we need to know the rules and the regulations to which we need to go to get from A to B and then to finally our next plan. Correct. And as advisors, is it difficult to explain that to a parent or to a kid saying, I know you really want to go play in the dub. I know you want to. But by doing so, it then does this and this and this. Well, for the little guys, it um, to kind of crush their dream, it's hard. But you have to get them back to, you know, back to reality. Um, it, you know, you got to say, okay, guys, well, you got, you know, so many steps to go up until you can make it that far that you want to go to. You got to work your butt off. With the older kids, if Sean's already said the disappointment, the goal setting, you know, that's all going to be there. They have to have the drive. If they don't have the drive, they're not going to make it. And then they will end up, you know, playing beer league. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things I point out to them too, when they say, oh, I want to go NCAA route, they say, okay, well, bring me your report card. Let's take oh, a look yeah. at what the marks are. And when yeah. I see 50s and 60s, I'm like, okay, so yeah. the amount of hard work that you're putting into your hockey that's not going to get you to the NCAA. You got to pick up your mark. You got to be in the mid eighties for them to even look at you. Just because you're a great hockey player, that's not going to get you where you got to pick up your school marks. And I'm just worried that they're not going to pass math or English to get into grade 10 or 11. <laughs> right. No. And, and Angie, like you said, your Angie, your focus has been on the, the CSSHL and their mandate has always been to, you know, promote and provide an environment for the student athlete experience. Yeah. I mean, it, proof is in the pudding where you're seeing players, uh, that are graduating from those U18 prep programs from all over Western Canada, including CDA in, in Idaho. These yeah. players are now getting offers to go play, getting scholarships. They yeah. are then getting to that next level should they choose to, not just because of their athletic prowess, but also their work in the classroom. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm my brother and I have always stated, if you can be a student athlete at 16 and 17, that's just going to open up more doors for you and give you more opportunity for scholarship when you finally do graduate high school. Yeah. And I know for both of you, when you see those success stories, it's truly amazing. And you can kind of put a stamp on saying that that was my guy, but that doesn't end there for either one of you. Cause I know that cause you've got another one waiting in the wings. It's true. Definitely true. It's uh and it's great to have, and that that's where you got to be out right and watching and helping them scale and and passing you know notes on like Sean said he's got a lot of contacts uh, we wanted Sean on board be, not just because of his contacts but because of his knowledge and when we have those players that are looking at those other avenues we can say all right well here's Sean you go talk to him and and he'll tell you how it's going to be because you know maybe it's the grades maybe it's and you alluded that uh, just just now to all the players that have been getting scholarships. There's been so many players in the last few years within the CSSHL that have been like they, some of those grants and, and scholarships that they've been giving amazing. And that's because that they worked hard, not just off, on the ice, but off the ice and in the classroom and in the community just to get to the next steps because they came, they, when they turned 17, they got focused, they had an advisor, um, it helped them work through. Most of them had advisors and they've worked through it and they've managed to get great opportunities handed to them. Yeah. And, and that's the same with the older player. Like if the, when the older player realizes, okay, well, my marks were where it's not going to be. So for example, when they come to chase, there's opp opportunities mm -hmm. to get their marks better. And that's what the uh, player did that I told you about that, that just signed in Jamestown. And he wasn't a great student in high school. He thought he was having fun and all that, but 
when he was in Fernie, he wasn't just working hard on his hockey skills. He was upgrading his marks. So he could get that scholarship offer from Jamestown, right? Yeah. No, and that's the thing. I mean, when they when they realize that something's got to be picked up and they really want it, they'll find a way. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, that's and that's where I think both of you come into play because you're you're planting the seed, like you said, you're leading the horse to water. You're giving them this opportunity, this support person outside of family, because family will always agree with you or disagree with you. <laughs> but having that third party that says, you know what, I've been there, I've done that, I've. I've got the opportunity. I have the the contacts to give you your opportunity next. And I think that's what Cobb Sports Marketing is doing uh, by personalizing their efforts on each individual client you guys have, which I think is tremendous because no one player is the same as another player. We group them into talent programs like hard worker or you know drive to the net guy, dangles, dangle extraordinaire. Uh, brick wall goaltenders you name it I mean the bottom line is you're able to cater an a la carte experience almost for your clients to make sure that that next level for them is the right fit because the success rate is only good as how great your job is and how well they're gonna speak of you after they graduate the next level right correct very true power of three and it's amazing I mean there's three of us on three I mean, referring people is amazing but you got to be good at what you do, and I think you guys are doing a great job. Well, we try. It's kind of hard having Sean as a boss, though. He's a slave driver. That's two nothing now. <laughs> yeah. I better back off camera. <laughs> Sounds good. Sean Gilbert, Andrew Greenoff, thank you very much for joining me this fine, beautiful day. Uh, I look forward to the rinks opening up here very shortly for everybody uh, in all provinces and all over Canada. And uh, let's see some. Let's see how the. Uh, let's, the me muscle memory happens here with these chicken legs. I'm kind of in, I'm going to look forward to seeing how these kids, if they remember how to skate. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You're I'm welcome, just guys. worried about Sean. Honest, I don't know if he's going to be able to cut it this year. Like he's been eating a lot of uh, chicken and steaks on his new smoker. Yeah. So that's three okay. now. Best thing about being a, being the head coach is you got assistant coaches to push the pucks for you. Oh, yeah. He's got a hug with them, right? That's exactly. True. <laughs> Thank right. you, boys. Thanks very much. Have a great rest of the day. You too. You too. Thanks, Leo. You're welcome, guys. So there you have it. Sean Gilbert and Andrew Greenall from Cop Sports Marketing. A little bit of fun, a little bit of shots. Nonetheless, if you're looking for some representation or even the words uh, of encouragement or what exactly Cop Sports Marketing can do, find them on Facebook, Cop Sports Marketing. Uh, look for them. Andrew is a great resource. He will answer all questions you have. And having someone like Sean Gilbert, who's been in another world of hockey for almost, I would say, 30 to 35 years, he knows the ins and outs, and he knows properly how to take care of your players and how to properly uh, attest their skills and where they should be going for the next level. This is Theo Tetkalek with Amateur Sports TV on the ice, brought to you by Pemina Source for Sports and Case Financial Group. Look for us Tuesdays and Thursday evenings as well. Coffee with Graham, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, great to see us. Great for following us. And stay safe, stay well. We're almost there. Have a great day. Bye-bye.